This video is going to be on the Discogs integration with Thunder POS 5.7 and above. Uh, all information is accurate as of the time of this recording, but may change down the road if Discog services change. So as you can see here, we've got a Thunder POS window here. Uh, just to explain for those who may not know what Discogs is, Discogs.com is a marketplace and database for music. In particular, this set of functionality focuses on using Discogs as a vendor database. So it'll allow you to search that database, to import items from that database, um, avoid filling in information about the database, that kind of thing. So if we go here to databases and then to Discog search. We will see our search screen. There's a few different things we can search by. We can do a quick query, which is what I would generally recommend using. And then you can also do specific searches by title, by artist, or by a track. Um, a track would be a particular song on an album uh, for searching. Uh, so if we do a quick query here, we've got a database that has not yet been connected to um, Discogs. So if we do a search for Funkadelic, it is going to try to connect to it. And you will need to have a Discogs.com account with the software uh, or with their uh, seller settings configured in order to get pricing suggestions. In order to use it at all, you'll need a Discogs.com account. Um, we would recommend just setting that up in advance of doing it within the software, but as of this time, there is no cost to do that. So you would just hit authorize here once you're logged in as a Discogs user. And then if you copy this code over, uh, the code will be different each time into the software and hit okay. You'll only need to do that once uh, unless you deauthorize it later, in which case you'll have to do it again. So you you can see we kind of get a graphical interface for um, the search. By default, you're gonna get 25 per page, but you can change the paging on that. Uh, and our results here are gonna be albums. So, you know, different albums that have come up with this. And if we click on one of these, um, then we will get a number of different releases for this album. And um, depending on, on the particular album, there can be literally hundreds of re-releases of the same album, um, but you will have your year and formats. You can actually filter it down. It's a good idea to filter down. For example, here we'll look at vinyl in the US and just apply that filter. And then we will look for, look at this reissue one. So you just find the particular release you want and then hit release details. And it is going to give you a little more information, including some suggested pricing. Uh, now it's only gonna have suggested pricing in the event that the album is actually sold enough on their marketplace to have pricing, but most things that you're gonna actually run into will have that. Um, now you can see here that we've got a screen from which we can do an import. Um, so there's really kind of three sections to this screen. One over here on the right is your pricing and then the cover art. In the middle, we've got notes about the album and then a track list and then a little bit of other information. And then at the far left here, we've got options for importing. So they have a number of different identifiers. Uh, this number right here is what's called the Discogs ID. That will actually import into a Discogs ID field so that you can later uh, map to this. But the default is going to be what's the barcode. Now, if you use older albums, like if we had imported the original release of this, there would not have been a UPC barcode on that because it was from 1970. So that, you know, would have had a catalog number and the Discogs ID but you can always type in an item ID if you need to, um, just as you, all, you always can with our system. Uh, for department and category, uh, we 
default to the format as the department. Um, in the event that the format doesn't exist, it will give you the option to create it, but you can also just select whatever other department you already have if you do not want to use the one that they use. And similar under category, we use the genre. Uh, in this case, there are multiple genres and actually Funk Soul would create a new one. Um, format is pretty much always going to just have the one. Genre can have multiple. Uh, could be even you know, four or five for a particularly complicated album. Um, this one they've got categorized as either rock or funk and soul. And then for the pricing, the default suggestions are going to be mint for new. Very good plus for used price one and good plus for used price two. So if you want to switch it over, you don't even have you can type in if you just want to manually adjust. But you can also just click this drop down box and select like if you wanted instead of mint near mint, just drop it down to that price. Um, and then including the Discogs notes and notes or track list and notes, the notes field gets used for many of the e-commerce options such as WooCommerce. So you can actually have it build out the notes field to include either just the notes, which in this case, the case of this album are fairly short but can be a little bit lengthier. And then the track list. Uh, regardless of what you check here, um, for the song tracks feature, the track list will get brought in, but this will allow it to be brought into the notes field as well. And then just the vendor part number. Uh, this allows you, if there is like a catalog number and you want to bring that in, to select one of the identifiers to go straight into the vendor part number fields. Um, and then let's just select one of those. Just uh, it's, It'll be the same as the item ID. And we'll go ahead and check these. And then we're going to hit import. And when we hit import, it's going to take us to the full item edit screen with the things we have selected, such as our price, our department and category, will, and you know what's in our notes will be brought in. Additionally, it will fill in other fields that do not you don't have to choose options for, such as the Discogs ID, the title and the description, uh, the description two, which is the kind of sub format. So in this case, LP album, and it's a reissue. Um, and then if it's got a valid street date, this one did not. And many of that, because Discogs is kind of a, a user community curated database, the street date is kind of not consistently there. In this case, it was not on there. Um, they do have a release year, but we just, if it's not a valid date, it will just default to the current day. Um, so if we save this, you know, it'll be brought into our inventory and then we'll be taken back to the uh, details screen and we can just cancel out there. So that's importing if you need to do a search. For quick importing, I'm going to go ahead, because I don't have one here, we're going to just grab a barcode from one of these other albums. I just need to find one that has a release that would have a, a barcode on it. There we are. So we're going to just copy that. Uh, so then if we go into our item screen and we want to quick import, In this case, there are multiple releases that had this barcode, and we're going to have to select which one we actually want. You can kind of get in there. You can look at the particular cover art and then look at the notes if you need to to figure out which one it is. So in this case, we'll take this Europe one, which is the one we were looking at before. Um, so you can see we actually don't have a CD category, or department rather, or a funk soul category. So when we import this, it is going to warn us that we are going to create that category and department. But it only does that if you're creating a new one. And uh, that's pretty well it. Um, one last thing you can do. So if we if we go here and take a look at this album, you can update pricing. There's no mass updating of pricing because Discogs is a uh, service. It puts certain restrictions on how many requests you can make at a time. So there's no way to say update my entire inventory. 
but you can go check on pricing on a particular piece by just going to that piece in inventory and hitting more and then check Discogs pricing and it will give you their current suggested pricing on that piece. And then if you click the drop down here, you'll see that your current pricing is listed first and then their pricing spread is there. Even if your current price is one of their prices, it'll just list that price twice. Um, so that is the basics of using Discogs within Thunder POS. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us, but we think this is actually going to be a really great database for our record stores and any other stores that may sell music. Um, so please let us know if there's anything else we can do to help you with this.